Hi, my name is Ski Oakenfull and I'm a musician, producer and Ableton certified trainer. I'd like to welcome you to this short series of videos where I'll show you how to create a track from start to finish in Ableton Live Lite, helping you familiarise yourselves with the layout and the functions of the software so you can start producing your own tracks as quickly as possible. I've been using Live for over 16 years now and I'm a massive fan, so I'm sure you're going to love it too. In this first video, I'm going to take you through the registration and installation process and then give you a quick walkthrough of the different areas in Live so you can get ready to make some music. Try to follow along with all the videos if you can, but don't worry if you get lost, you can always watch them back. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to do is to go to the ableton.com website and then click on login or register. And then on this page, you'll need to type in your email address. Then choose a password. Make sure it's a memorable one. And then your first name and your last name. Make sure you're in the right country and sign up to the newsletter and then click on create account. So now let's register your serial number. Now that you're logged in, click on account and then register a product. And this is where you need to type in your serial number. This is mine, so it can't be used again. And click on submit. And this is where you'll see your available licenses. Choose either Mac or Windows. And then click on download. And you'll see it downloading here. I've just sped this up. Unfortunately, I haven't got such a fast internet connection. Then you need to go to your downloads folder and click on the disk image. Click agree to the license and it will open up the disk image. Then you'll need to drag the LiveLight application to the applications folder on your computer and it will install. And then finally, navigate to your applications folder and double click the application to launch Live Light. It will start loading. And we're in. So if you've already downloaded and installed Live, there's another really easy way to authorize it online. As you've seen, I've actually already authorized my copy, but I can still show you the process anyway. So once you've launched Live, go up to the menu item here and select preferences then make sure you have the Licenses Maintenance tab open. Click on the Authorize at Ableton.com button and it will open the Ableton site in your browser where you'll then need to log in with your account details. Once you've logged in, you may get a pop-up message like this. So just click Open Ableton Live Lite and it will take you back to the Live application and you'll get a success message. Now, in some cases, you may need to authorize your copy of Live Lite if you are offline, i.e. you're not connected to the internet. If you have that situation, you can go to Preferences here and then go to the Licenses Maintenance tab. Now, I've actually already authorized this, um, but you will need to click on the Authorize Offline button, and then this will give you some instructions. Uh, now, the main thing you'll need to note down is your hardware code, which is here, and you can actually save this to your computer. Uh, let's just put it onto the desktop. There we go. And it will create a text file so you can actually copy and paste your hardware code. Now there's a good web page which takes you through the process. And essentially you'll need to log in on another computer that is connected to the internet. Um, and you'll need to actually type in your hardware code here and it will save an authorization file. It's a .auz file, which you can then transfer to the computer that is offline. You can double click on that and then it will authorize your version of Live Lite. And finally, a quick note to say that if you're registering on a Windows computer, there's a walkthrough link in the description of this video. So when you first launch Ableton Live, it will show you the demo set. In Ableton, set means your project or your song. So let's have a listen to what it sounds like.
So I'll let you check out the whole track. You might have seen that I was flicking between these two different views and we'll talk about those a little bit later. You'll also see on the right hand side here something called the help view and you can turn this on and off here. Now this is a really good starting point as it contains some useful reference information. For example, what's in the latest version of Live 11, how you can record audio, creating beats, the packs you've installed, how to set up your audio input and output and your MIDI controllers. And there's also some built-in lessons which I thoroughly recommend checking out. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start from scratch. So in order to do that, we're gonna go over to the menu option here and click on new live set. There we go. And I'm gonna close this help view here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just set up our preferences. So if we go over to the live menu here and click on preferences, you can see various tabs here uh, to set up how you want live to work for you. So the first thing we can do is we can change the zoom display. I've got this 135. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can just adjust that there. Um, let's keep it at 135. The next thing that's really important is to set up your audio input and output. Now I've got a Universal Audio Apollo, um, but if you can click down here, we could just set it to the built-in output of your computer, uh, whatever you want it to. So I'm gonna keep that there. I'm also gonna set the input as my um, Universal Audio Apollo as well. The next thing is to set up your MIDI interface. So if you have a MIDI keyboard or controller that you want to use with Ableton Live, you can set it up here. I've got an 8th Instruments Complete Control, so I'm just gonna set that up there. And you can refer to the manual of your controller for the exact settings here. Now, before we have a look at the various areas of Live, I would recommend heading over to this webpage here, which has got some great information and some videos as well about all the different areas of Live. Um, but I'm gonna take you through a few of these now. So first of all, on the left-hand side here, this is called the browser section. And you can hide it or show it by clicking this small triangle. Now this is where you're gonna access all your sounds, your samples, your grooves, and your plugins. And you'll see that we'll be visiting this section a lot in this series of videos. Now there are two views in Ableton Live, and you may have seen me switching between those in the demo set. Um, we have this view that we're looking at at the moment, which is called Session View, and this is where the tracks are displayed vertically. Um, it's great for building loops and ideas when you're starting your tracks. And then if we click on here, we go over to the Arrange View, and this is where the tracks are displayed horizontally, and it has a linear timeline. So we use this when we're arranging the final structure of our track, or you could start with this section as well, it's up to you. And a really great keyboard shortcut is uh, Tab. We can just flick between the two by pressing the Tab key. So the main central area here contains the tracks, and these tracks can either be MIDI tracks or audio tracks. So a MIDI signal is normally generated by a keyboard or a controller, and it contains information about the notes that you play. So this is where you record that information. An audio signal will be recorded onto an audio track of Ableton Live. And this could be a vocal, guitar, or a synth. We'll be recording something later. On the right-hand side, we have our return tracks, and this is where we can set up effects, and we can send the output of both MIDI and audio tracks to these channels. On the far right, we have our master track, and this is where all the tracks are summed together into one output. Now, one really useful view here is the information view. And if you hover over pretty much any feature of Ableton Live, it will show you what it does. For example, this is the track activator, but we can turn this on and off with this triangle here. Over on the right-hand side, we have the routing and mixing section, and this will let you choose what you want to display, uh, the input and the output, the sends and the returns, and the mixer as well. We can actually change the size of some of the sections. So for example, if you want to show a little bit more of the mixer section, you can just drag it up and down there to create more space. So whether you're in session view or arrangement view, the top section of the screen stays the same and has global and transport controls. 
So this is where you can change things like the tempo, the time signature, turning the metronome on and off, uh, whether you're playing or overdubbing or recording. And there's also some looping controls here as well. But yeah, we'll see all of these functions and areas of live used in the following videos. Okay, so now we're up and running with Ableton Live Lite. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to program a beat.